Trey Lance, three career starts. He loses week one, and all of a sudden, like, every single football analyst in the country seems like they're saying Trey Lance is a bust. And not just, like, I, I think Trey Lance is a bust. It's, like, from their like from the depths of their soul, really yelling it, you know, with passion. And I've never – usually you give a young quarterback some time. Like, you know, Trevor Lawrence is struggling in Jacksonville in year two, but everyone's like, hey, yeah, come on, just give him some time. But Trey Lance, three starts, everyone's like, he's – bring back Jimmy. I've never seen anything like it, and frankly, I think it's kind of gross. Why do you think this is happening? What is a phenomenon? Why do you think it is? What's the source of it? I think it's very irresponsible of the of the media to cover it the way that they are. Yeah, and and they are really coming out and being bold for a kid who has three stars, who everybody says, "Hey, he needs time, he needs work, uh, yeah. he needs to develop all these things." And then it's like, "Oh man, he comes out and he makes some great throws and does some good plays," and it's like, "No, nope. I mean, shoots." Go yeah. back to last year, played against the Texans, must win game. 49ers don't win that game, they don't go to the playoffs. And yeah. he completes 70% of his passes, throws a couple of touchdowns, runs in for another one that gets called back. And, you know, his next start since then was in a monsoon where he's played well for three quarters and it's like, he can't play. I think a lot of it is just based on more so the expectations of the 49ers as opposed yeah. to the, these other teams and who he has behind him with Trey Lance. Uh, I mean, excuse me, Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. So maybe if that wasn't the case, maybe it wouldn't be as loud, but it is pretty wild. I, I compared it to uh, uh, LeBron James, mm -hmm. where uh, LeBron James, it almost feels like no matter what he does, now he's had success. Trey Lance hasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, let me get that clear. Of course. I ain't saying he's LeBron. But just in the sense of how they talk about LeBron coming into the league to now some of his accomplishments, and there's always this negative pushback. There's always it's not enough. It's not enough for anyone. And I've seen a lot of scrutiny for LeBron, and I think this it's the same for Trey Lance from the sense of no matter what he's done, and he has done a lot of good, it is, it's no, even though it's only been three starts. So I haven't seen anything like it. Yeah. especially with the way it feels like he's kind of being attacked in the media. But, yeah. you know, he's a grown man, and, and if you go out and you win, it, that noise kind of slows down just a little bit. You hear things right here. We got Martin in the chat. It says, Mac Jones is a winner. Can you can you highlight that real quick? You see sure. it? It's right there. Hold on. Who said it? Martin Jones. Mac Jones is a winner. Yeah, there you go. Mac Jones is a winner. Mac Jones has lost five out of his last six games, and the only win was against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he's thrown eight interceptions in those games. But we don't, we don't bring that. We don't talk about that. Yeah. Right. Mac We're Jones was freaking awful week one. He, awful. He's awesome. I mean, but but no, yeah. he's great though. You don't yeah. hear anything about it. Doesn't matter. He's established. He's because a top he won a game player in the where league. He only yeah. had to throw the ball three times. Now, yeah. this is not me trying to push down on Mac Jones to prop up. Trey Lance, I'm just saying all these kids need time to grow. All these kids have to continue to prove, and everyone else had an opportunity to play and grow, except for the one that they said needs time to grow, and they're not really giving him that opportunity. I think that's that's the part that's a little weird to me. And I ain't saying Trey Lance is going to be great. I'm just saying it's weird how he has been attacked, especially this early with only three starts. Yeah, it's it's so many people want to shut him and like not let him play football anymore. He's done. We've seen enough. Three starts. Go back to Jimmy. And I feel like, let's just be honest. Like, black quarterbacks face more scrutiny. They just do, right? Yeah. I they mean, just you just got to be good. I mean, they, but they there's say a lot things of black about quarterbacks in the league. Lamar Jackson, they say yeah. things about these guys. I see Walsh in the chat, and he's like, Trey Lance looked the worst. Trey Lance was a top 10 quarterback statistically through three quarters, and it wasn't until the monsoon, and then that's when things went haywire. But, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't Hold know. on. So, look, I just want to lay out my argument real quick. Black quarterbacks already face more scrutiny. But Trey is in a unique position where he took an older white man's job and the guy is still here. And I think a lot of people, maybe white people, even subconsciously, identify with Jimmy. Man, that sucks. I can only imagine what that feels like. And they are empathizing with Jimmy here. You know what I'm saying? And, and if Jimmy were gone, if Jimmy were starting on another team, if he were starting for Washington right now, no one would, everyone would feel great. He, Jimmy, happy ending for him. Trey, good luck. But the fact that you took the guy's job and he's there, I think a lot of people feel like literally angry about it. And I think that's where this is coming from. It's not right. It's not they're... right. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Like, nah, man. Because when Alex Smith got his job taken, he got a job in Kansas City. And then when he got his job taken from, uh, from Mahomes, he got a job in Washington. All good. Everyone's happy. But Jimmy is on the bench and it's not fair. He yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. I haven't seen. I haven't. I haven't thought about it from that angle. That's how I see it. But um, you know, it's 
I think there is this certain level of one a lot of people just naturally hate change and people push back on change that's period. true when uh brian peacock and i when i got on locked on 49ers people hated it yeah. they hated the fact that eric crocker came on locked on 49ers i saw it in the reviews wow. i saw it on um they made blogs about it huh. like people do not like change now i go to the chicago game and over 200 people are telling me how much they love the show right so people hate change originally and um you know, it just takes a little bit of time. So I think that might be more of, you know what you're getting from Jimmy Garoppolo. I believe that with Jimmy starting this, the floor is probably nine, 10 wins. Like, I think we know that. I think we know you can go a certain distance with him. I think you also know, well, it, it's a little difficult for him to overcome certain situations. And that has led to the 49ers not having two Super Bowl wins if they had a little bit more. Not, not to say that Jimmy hasn't done a lot of really good things, but just he needs a certain level of help. And I think that certain level of help that he typically needs in these tight moments, the 49ers didn't give Trey Lance that in the game when the defense uh, blows two assignments. The defense gives up third down plays when they were getting off the field. And I thought that resulted in more of a loss than any crazy, terrible moments from Trey Lance. Yeah. It just seems like people are really, really uh... – hoping he fails and then you actually like interact with him or see him and get to know him like why would you root against someone like him i'm not saying you have to root for him but why would you root against him he seems like the kind of guy because people can't, can't see big light. they can't see big picture people don't understand this i talked about it on my show this morning and like you right yeah. there was no guarantees when you i mean you're doing your thing with the press democrat and all that and yeah. you start a youtube channel yeah. And there are probably some people that are thinking, why would you start a YouTube channel? Yeah, why would why you do this? Why would you do that? Right? Like, yeah. well, this isn't this and this and that. And it has been highly successful. But you had to take a chance. And there right. was some transition in yeah. that. Right? Yeah. And people don't, most people, I think there are a lot of people that live these, and this is not me crapping on people, but they live these normal lives right. where it's very simple and they're okay. Okay, I can pay my bills. I'm okay. I've had the right? same job. Maybe I live paycheck years. to paycheck, yeah, but I've had yeah. the same job and they are content yeah. with that. And they don't know, you know, you can actually be doing better than you're actually doing. You know, right. there's a better version of whatever it is that you're doing and yeah. higher levels that you can reach, but you never give yourself the opportunity to reach that or go through that. And there are a lot of people that do that. And I think that thinking and that logic translates over to how they think in everything in their life. So they'd rather play it safe with Jimmy Garoppolo as opposed to uh, see the upside in someone and understand what the development and the process is for that person to grow and be great. They don't get that. That's a great analogy. It's like, some, it's like someone has a, a cushy job, but not that great. And you're telling them, hey, go pursue your dreams. And maybe they want to be a stand-up comedian. They bomb the first time. They're like, well, can't do it. It's like, well, I guess it wasn't meant for you. You didn't really commit to it. Now you're back to Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, if you have a couple bad experiences with Trey Lance, you're going to give up. Well, I guess it wasn't for you then. And he could go on and be a good quarterback somewhere else, and you're going to feel stupid. Man, listen, a couple years ago, uh, or a year ago, yeah, a couple years ago now, I quit my job and, you know, didn't really have no money and went all in on training. And the first day I had one kid. Second day I got two kids. And it could have been easy to be like, this ain't going to cut it. And now nah, I just kept grinding away. I went through my ups and downs, my lumps. I figured it out. And now... I'm doing very well with it. That's dope. And same Is that thing your with primary story? I, Originally having podcasting, I mean, I started with, you know, 50 people because, you know, I have a yeah. decent following on social media, but you know, I have 50 people watching this stuff. And now every morning I got four or five, 600 people watching at you. one time. That's and right. there was a growth and there was me sticking to this process. Right. And yep. there are people that they just truly don't, they don't, they don't, they, don't, they can't grasp that because they, yeah. they've never been through that. They've yeah. never challenged themselves enough. Right. To, right. to do that right. so then they criticize right. other people who are willing to do those th yeah. things and really like live life on the edge and say you know what maybe it doesn't work out right. but i'm going to give and it every opportunity to do it do so and that they're not willing to do that and you've been doing this since you were what 18. i mean you've been betting on yourself every step of the betting way on myself man i had every a coach tell me yeah. when i went back to junior college at 21 i had a coach that tell me like man why are you coming back then yeah, it's too late well, since then, I went off. I played junior college, all conference, uh -huh. went to a university, yep. made all conference, went to the signed the NFL contract, did that. Uh, right. Went back down, had to figure out life again. Went yep. somehow was a credential member of the media for the 49ers. And I mean, you were there, like, right. and everything else. So it's like you, you, you figure it out. I, yep. I truly think people they don't understand. They don't understand. And I know you. You again, you've gone through certain things as well. I mean, I bet on myself coming out of college and it took me until about 32 to, to reap the, the benefits of it, but I never quit. 
I never quite thought about it, but I think, but I always kept thinking like, man, if I quit and go like become like a substitute teacher, not get, get substitute, something normal, I will hate myself and I'll be more miserable than if I was sticking it out doing this. So I have to do this. It's like not even an option. So not, it's not even an option.